going on, Jerome's? We're back taking a look at another mock draft. Lance Zerlang, NFL.com draft analyst, released his mock draft 1.0. And I love Lance. He is phenomenal. He puts in that work. He's not afraid to have an opinion that stands away from the crowd. And, yeah, it, it, it's just great. And uh, it, it is really good to absorb a lot of opinions, a lot of mock drafts, a lot of big boards, because then you start to see patterns and some consensuses do form, and then you get a better picture of how some analysts see a player as well well as, I mean, some analysts, Lance Erline certainly has his connections as well, how decision makers, how scouts, how NFL teams potentially uh, perceive prospects as well. And there's something interesting going on here, and, and we'll get to that. You, spoiler from the thumbnail, the Vikings pass up Justin Fields. I don't know if they would do that, but we'll get into that in a sec. So number one, uh, yes, Trevor Lawrence, Jaguars. And, and like we've said a bunch before, just we're just waiting. There will come a, a mock draft where Trevor Lawrence will drop. He killed a guy. Maybe not. Nah. It, it would take like, nah, yeah, yeah. Number two. So an interesting consensus is starting to form that Zach Wilson two to the Jets. Not so much that he's going to go number two, but the fact that the pride of BYU, small school kid, and, and you do wonder about, okay, well, he, he didn't fare well against Coastal Carolina. Who did he really play this year? Blah, blah, blah. But you're betting on traits. You're betting on arm talent. You're betting on moxie. And Zach Wilson I don't think I've seen a mock where he falls out of the top five, maybe not even top four, uh, where he doesn't get past Atlanta. So that is really interesting, especially since uh, a lot of these mock drafts that we've gone through certainly do have connections uh, to the people who will be pulling the levers uh, in the National Football League. So, hmm, Zach Wilson and Joe Douglas Jets gets their, get their guy, uh, and they do uh, assume, uh, presumably uh, flip Sam Darnold somewhere else for some picks, but nah. three. So there's no trades in this mock draft, but I think Miami would be in a trade-down situation. But uh, pick up Devontae Smith, who they coached at the Senior Bowl. Of course, Heisman Trophy winner, phenomenal season. Uh, and if you're going to see if two is going to be the guy next year, and you want to give him the best chance possible, surround him with weapons, familiar weapons, uh, the guy that he threw the game-winning national title touchdown pass to as true freshman uh, against Georgia at Alabama uh, would be a nice little pickup here for so this is the second mock that we've seen Patrick Sertan going forward to the Falcons, where Arthur Smith, offensive guy, Matt Ryan, 36 years young, you know, aging out, the former number three overall pick. Or what was he two? Number three, whatever, in, in 2008. Uh, but the pass, uh, the fact that they pass on Justin Fields, the, pa the fact that they pass on Trey Lance, wow, 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 wow. But Sertan would be a phenomenal talent here. Of course, legacy guy. His dad played in the league back in the day. By the way, Patrick Sertan, uh, on the old Madden games, was always like rated a 93. Like, like dude was a stud. Uh, but Patrick Sertan and AJ Terrell, who they drafted first round uh, last year out of Clemson, that is a really good uh, cornerback duo going forward. Five. So Bengals, O line, O line, O line. But Lance brings up a good point here. The Bengals have a lot of cap room. Just buy offensive linemen. Just go after Joe Thune. Just go after Trent Williams. Uh, just go after Corey Lindsley. Uh, there, there's always money uh, in the banana stand. Just, so throw that money. Uh, and then in the draft, Kyle Pitts would be unfair. Where Joe Burrow, working with Kyle Pitts, really would become the Mahomes-Kelsey connection in the AFC North. Where Pitts, uh, he's too big and fast for most safeties. He's too big and fast for linebackers. So what are you going to do? And he's absolutely too big for cornerbacks. Just a mismatch nightmare. And uh, the big reason why Kyle Trask uh, had such a phenomenal season in Florida, uh, Kyle Pitts was that guy. Five. So that was five. Six. So the Eagles... Now, the Eagles linebackers suck as much as the wide receivers and the cornerbacks and offensive line. So Parsons stays in state, you know, uh, absolute physical freak linebacker. And he would become, you know, their Jeremiah Trotter 2.0. But, yeah, a superstar athlete. By the way, Jeremiah Trotter's kid uh, committed. What, what school did he commit to? It doesn't matter. But, yeah, same thing with, like, Patrick Sertan the second, And, you know, we're just really starting to see, oh, we are old. We are old. Also, how many players are named Shaq? Uh, seven. So Jamar Chase, maybe they really are in on Jared Goof, but you know, picking up Jamar Chase here, wide receiver one outside the numbers, give Jared Goff a big time target because you're probably going to lose uh, Baby Tron as well as Marvin Jones of free agency. But wow, 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 wow. The fact that they have Justin Fields and Trey Lance on board at seven and they pass. I don't know, man. I don't know. Eight. So the Panthers, now you'd think that they would be in on quarterbacks since they uh, actively pursued Stafford, 
Maybe they should come after Kirk. Uh, Teddy is you know going to be whatever in Carolina, but uh, going with Rashawn Slater. So not even Penny Sewell, not even a quarterback, but Rashawn Slater opt out uh, last year on uh, Northwestern. Now the general consensus of like Daniel Jeremiah and um, and, and Zerline is that Rashawn Slater is a dude. Uh, like he is absolutely phenomenal. He is good. I I don't know if I've seen enough to sway me to put him ahead of Penny Sewell. Uh, but Slater gets after it. You put him at guard, put him at tackle. Uh, you can put him at right tackle if they don't re-sign Taylor Moten. So, there you go. Uh, nine. So, now the Broncos pass on quarterback here, which is certainly interesting. Perhaps they do pick up – well, they're not going to pick up Derek Carr in division, but uh, they go a different direction in this spot, or maybe they are going to roll with Drew Locke, let him sink or swim this season. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, cornerbacks in this division with Mahomes and Herbert, who should be second in Offensive Rookie of the Year voting, uh, yeah, going to be uh, pretty important. So Caleb Farley, the opt-out last year, has the length, press man ability, coming out of Virginia Tech, second cornerback off the board. Ten, how did this happen? Uh, I Like, how? Why? Penny Sewell falling all the way down to the Cowboys. Now, you could play him at right tackle. You could kick uh, Collins into guard for uh, yeah, the rest of his contract. Uh, you can have him replace Tyron Smith, the left tackle, eventually. But wow, 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 wow. 11. So the Giants, yeah, this one makes sense. Where, you know, Waddle falling out of the top 10. Deep threat for Danny Dimes. Uh, 12. Niners. Now we finally get a quarterback. Yeah, Trey Lance coming off the board before. Justin Fields. Yeah, and yes, you are betting on the known, uh, unknown, just like uh, with Zach Wilson, but an even smaller school prospect, SPS, uh, FCS powerhouse, NDSU. He's got the arm. He takes care of the football. Zero interceptions in 2019 as a redshirt freshman. Also has the mobility, ran for 1,000 yards. He's phenomenal. Kid is a winner. You're betting on the upside, and I think that's what the Niners and, Lynch, uh, and uh, John Lynch do here uh, with Kyle Shanahan. And man, 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 baby, baby, baby. Like, hit him... His skills in the movement-based West Coast scheme uh, in uh, in San Francisco, I like it for Lance. I hate it for everyone else. Kind of sucks. 13. So I was told that Justin Herbert was so good that why does he need offensive line help? Like Why? Why? But Christian Derrissaw, uh, a guy that frankly should be getting more hype as a, a very – Amazing all-around left tackle. Uh, he's great in pass protection. Only gave up six pressures and zero sacks in 2020. Uh, uh, just an absolute dog in the run game as well. Just gets after it. I love Christian Derrissaw. I would be perfectly happy if the Vikings picked him up at 14. Sorry, Ezra, you're going to play guard for a while. But uh, going 13 to the Chargers where Sam Tevy, no. Trey Pipkins, no. Yeah. So 14, here's where it gets interesting. So the Vikings go Elijah Vera Tucker. Now, Certain parts of the Vikings fan base will freak out, A, USC offensive lineman, B, USC offensive lineman who wore, wore uh, number 75. So, yeah, bad memories of Matt Khalil, but yeah, that, that, that's dumb ras- rationalization. Uh, but going with guard this high, I, I do think this is a little bit high for Vera Tucker. I do think he's a solid player. No, I don't think that he'll play tackle at the next level. I think he's a guard only. Uh, but... I don't know. If the Vikings were put in the spot where Justin Fields is still on board... Even though I'm not the biggest Justin Fields fan, I think that it would be too much value to pass up. And Spielman and uh, whoever the OC is going to be, very likely Clint Kubiak, uh, if they're like, check, he's in, he's our guy, you know what? We'll we'll just grab interior offensive lineman and defensive lineman uh, in rounds three and four. We got six picks there. Uh, And Justin Fields is just going to sit for two years behind Kirk Cousins. Hopefully we can work on uh, some of his issues that precipitated his fall here and then move on with life. But Or... Since he's going to follow the Patriots at 15, why not get teams who didn't get a quarterback on the horn? How about the Raiders or Washington or the Bears or the Colts or the Steelers or anyone who doesn't want Justin Fields to go to New England? How about that? How about that? Or even the Saints. Hey, come on up. Come on up. But, yeah, again, I think Vera Tucker's a a great player. I hope that fans won't hold him being overdrafted uh, against him because I, I think that he will be a rock solid guard for the Vikings uh, long term. Uh, phenomenal pass protection, uh, phenomenal pass protector, great balance, gets after it in the run game. Not exactly uh, elite movement skills, but wouldn't be a liability either. And I, I think he will be good. But are, are you having FOMO? Fear of missing out on Justin Fields or other players still on board? Yeah. Uh, but 15 Fields here. So Lance doesn't expound why Fields fell, even though, I mean, for. A long time, it was seen as Lawrence 1, Fields 2, or potentially even the other way around. Woo! 
never went that far. But uh, are, are we talking about his? Uh, are, are we talking about why he fell? Are we talking about his pocket awareness? Are we talking about his adjustments to the line of scrimmage? Because I mean, the talent is certainly there. I mean, we saw that uh, in the college football semifinals. Uh, he's an absolute tough kid. He drops dimes. He's got a big arm. He can be accurate at times, but uh, you know, great mobility as well. But why? Why did he fall? Hmm. Sixteen. So I got the Cardinals, uh, Aziz Ujulari, who one of our favorite edge rushers. I would take him over Gregory Rousseau. He comes off the board before um, you know G Reg in, in this spot. Uh, but Aziz, yes, raw redshirt sophomore. But dude can absolutely get that edge, man. Great bender. And he was really above the rim coming in as a pass rusher. And uh, eventually he will be a full-on tools guy. He'll have a full suite uh, of pass rush moves. But, I mean, just the raw physical ability and skills. I mean, you can't teach it. You can't coach it. Can't do it. Yeah. 17, Jeremiah Uusu Kormora. As we've said a bunch, he should intrigue teams that have to go against um, their individuals. Uh, try that again. Joke should be appealing to teams who are in divisions with great movement tight ends. Nailed it. And since the Raiders do have Darren Waller, they don't have to worry about playing against him. But they have to play Travis Kelsey twice a year. You get the Travis Kelsey eraser getting after it. Uh, 18. Uh, so Gregory Rousseau, his draft day slide stops. He gets uh, taken ahead of Quiddy Pay. Um, do we miss one? Now nah, we're fine. Uh, so Dolphins, uh, where they took uh, Devontae Smith at three, now uh, getting some defense at, at 18, keeping uh, Rousseau in-house. Where I, I do believe in his talent, I don't know if it would mesh right away with the Vikings at 14. He really is a guy who is without position, but frankly, I think they could use that to his uh, to their advantage in Miami uh, with Flores, where he can be edge, he can be inside, he can be a stand-up uh, you know, linebacker uh, in that front seven. So, I mean, they'll use him as a rotational guy at first. Eventually, uh, he will become a force, and yeah, I think it's a nice spot for him. I just don't think that the situation with the Vikings will be uh, most conducive for his development. Uh, 19. Washington football team. Oh, baby. So Elijah Moore, come on down. Wide receiver out of Ole Miss. Uh, and this is slightly surprising because Mac Jones is still on board. Some other uh, wide receivers of note are still on board as well. Offensive line, certainly, since they didn't really replace Trent Williams. But Elijah Moore, I really do like him. I think that he will you know, um, pair up phenomenally with, phenomenally with uh, Scary Terry as well as uh, be a nice compliment to Antonio Gibson out of the backfield, the pride of Memphis. So, man, man, let's go. Him working the slot, I like it. Uh, 20. Uh, so the Bears pick up Tevin Jenkins where they can put Jenkins at right tackle, eventually take over left side uh, for Leno where – I mean, there's a lot of fun names on the board still. Like, uh, Kadarius Tony is still there. Quiddy Pay, I would hate if he ended up in Chicago. Uh, Christian Barmore, I, I would absolutely despise if he ended up there. But Tevin Jenkins, who I like and respect as a tackle, you know, yeah. Uh, 21. So, Jason Owag goes to the Colts. Where, uh, barring the Colts pulling off the Deshaun Watson trade, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Quarterback is a need. Maybe they re-sign Jabroni Brisket. Uh, maybe they're happy with Jacob Eason. I don't know why they would be. Uh, left tackle would be a priority as well. Maybe they, they're in on Tevin Jenkins, but then they just missed out on him. But, yeah, Jason Webb. I mean, Chris Ballard does like length and speed uh, on the edge, so he might be too good to pass up in this spot. 22. So, Quiddy Pay. Draft day, fall, stops. He ends up being the fourth edge um, uh, taken, where I think this is a great spot for him. I mean, Quiddy Pay. With Jeffrey Simmons, with Harold Landry, just getting it. Uh, he, he's phenomenal. Uh, uh, he will be what they wanted Clown Shoes to be, where he's great against the run. Uh, he can get after it. He, he's strong enough to hold up at the point of attack, uh, and, and he can um, you know bend that edge uh, quite a bit. He is an absolute physical freak, so I, I don't get why he fell so far, but it is what it is. 23. So the Jets, where they already got the quarterback, Zach Wilson, uh, getting Zach so, some uh, run help, where Travis Etienne, I mean, he would have been a first-round pick last year uh, if it would have came out, but absolutely dynamic and electric, great uh, running in the zone scheme, uh, very solid uh, receiver out of the backfield as well, is just really going to help uh, Zach Wilson as they try to build something for Gang Green. 24, so the Steelers. Steelers, for a team that started out 11-0, they're going to have a lot of 
holes and issues. So Big Ben's probably going to retire. So quarterback could be a need. Maybe you see Mac Jones here. Running back could be a need, but Etienne's off the board. Do they go Najee Harris? It's a little bit too early. Their offensive line is probably going to get overhauled. Uh, Bud Dupree is probably leaving, so they could use some edge help. But Zayvon Collins, you put him in as an inside linebacker. You use him a little bit on the edge as well. I mean, just a, a guy who gets it. Just a guy who gets after it. Uh, Eric Hendricks 2.0. Loved me some Zayvon Collins. 25. Uh, J.C. Horn. All right, so the Jaguars got their guy Trevor Lawrence at one. Instead of doubling down, getting some, uh, getting him some weapons or some offensive line help uh, going on the other side of the ball. But Horn and Henderson, great duo going forward. Uh, Henderson was n- number nine overall pick uh, out of Florida last year. Uh, had a phenomenal rookie year, except got dinged up towards the end. You could make a case. I don't know, like him or A.J. Terrell and Jalen Johnson had the second best rookie uh, cornerback season behind Cameron Tiny Dancer. That's right. Face, 26. Christian Barmore to the Browns. Now, Browns could probably use some edge help, but Larry Ogunjobi is going to be a free agent as well as, I mean, if they want to cut Sheldon Richardson, I mean, they don't need to clear up cap space, but if they want to, I mean, Sheldon can come back to Minnesota. Come on. But yeah, Barmore in this spot, um, you're you're betting on potential. A wretched sophomore and uh, a guy that's just simply going to get better very quickly uh, for the Browns. Uh, 27. Ravens, so they never really replaced Earl Thomas, but Trevor Morig can play in the box, can play uh, single high, can play split safety, can do all of the things, uh, and is the only uh, first-round safety uh, this time around. Although, Jevin Hollins, he could sneak in. Uh, 28. So, it's been Saints, either quarterback. I don't know if they pass on Mac Jones in this spot, depending on what happens with Drew Brees. Could you imagine if Drew Brees comes back next year? My gosh. My God. Uh, But, uh, safety is also a need. Marcus Williams is a free agent. Linebacker Demario Davis isn't getting any younger. Uh, maybe even edge because uh, they might lose Trey Hendrickson uh, as well as uh, Marcus Davenport is like whatever. But Tyson Campbell in this spot uh, has length, has speed. Uh, nice little compliment for uh, Marcus Lattimore. Uh, 29. So the Packers. Landon Dickerson. My guy. This sucks because now I have to hate Landon Dickerson, and I don't want to do that. Absolute rock star, absolute rough-and-tumble dude. Uh, teammates love him. Uh, can take over at center uh, once he gets back from that knee injury. Uh, Corey Lindsley, they probably can't afford to re-sign, but this stinks. This stinks. Dickerson is a stud. 30. So the Bills go running back here. Najee Harris in this spot where... It's weird because you have Singletary, who's I. I think Zach Moss is going to be you know, the future you know, 1A of, of that uh, duo. But I don't know. Edge, more of a need. Wide receiver, more of a need. Like, you're going to take Najee Harris here over Kadarius Toney. Because even though Diggs was phenomenal this year, Cole Beasley's working from the slot, they could use a, a third wide receiver. Like, uh, Terrace Marshall Jr., Working outside the numbers uh, would make a lot of sense. Bateman would like make a lot of sense. Tony would be just a ton of fun. So, eh, not really all about that. 31 bucks. Jalen Phillips, Ed Rusher, Shaq Barrett, replacement, JPP, not getting younger. Yes, 32. Ooh, new addition. Greg Newsom, uh, the second cornerback on Northwestern, where I, I think that Newsom is going to be a, a high second-round pick, but if he snuck into the first round, I, I guess, I mean, it, it certainly could happen because I, I feel like, so the top of the draft, relatively easy. Like uh, even novices and experts and like everyone will be able to get generally what's going to go down in the top 20 picks. But I feel like between 20 and 50, it really is YOLO because teams will adjust their board based off of who's drafted. Uh, and then they'll adjust their big boards based on um, scarcity of a position or if there's a, a guy who's still remaining that they really want, they have priority on that. So there, there's a lot of crazy things. I feel like, between 20 and 50, you could almost just like pull names out of a hat where high end second round picks and a back end first round picks, you know, besides money, not really much of a difference. But uh, Greg Newsom in this spot, uh, go back and watch the Big Ten title game where Northwestern was given Ohio State the business. And then all of a sudden, Newsom went out and it was a whole different ball game. Dude uh, is an absolute alpha on the outside. I really like uh, Newsom. Uh, so Chiefs uh, in this spot where. Yeah, you know, they could have a, a couple other needs. Offensive line could use some freshening. Uh, maybe they get a, another safety like Jevon Holland to replace uh, Daniel Sorensen. But Newsom, yeah, it's a nice little pickup for Kansas City. Uh, guys who didn't get drafted. So Mac Jones still hanging on the board. Kyle Trask, 
I don't think Kyle Trask is going to be a first-round pick. Uh, but the wide receivers, Terrace Marshall Jr., Kadaris Tony, Bateman, Rondale Moore didn't go. Woo! Pat Fryermuth, uh, the other tight end, didn't go uh, either. Offensive lineman, no Leatherwood, no Cosme, no Mayfield, no Wyatt Davis, no matter what. Uh, defensive line, Asai, Boogie Basham still on board. Davion Nixon and Wuzuriki, uh, no go either. And then linebackers, Bolton Moses, uh, plus uh, cornerback Asante Samuel Jr., which, you know, probably could have snuck in. But I think teams putting more of an emphasis on on length in this spot. Uh, and then Jevon Holland uh, didn't quite make it either. Uh, so, yeah, it would be an interesting spot for the Vikings uh, at 14 if Justin Fields actually does make it. I think that if there were trades here, I think that they would just auction this pick off to the highest bidder, potentially even to the Patriots, just to make sure that no one leapfrogs them in this spot. But, you know, uh, but your thoughts, uh, Lance Erline, Mock Draft 1.0. Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Most support that work. Pull some of Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.